This video is about electric fields. We'll begin by discussing electric field basics and then we'll move on to electric field strength. Let's see the basics of electric fields. Two objects can exert a force on each other by coming in contact. For example, when a zebra is pushing a box across the floor, the zebra is in contact with the box and is exerting a force on the box. At the same time, the floor is also in contact with the box and is exerting a friction force on this box. There are also many cases when objects exert a force on each other without being in contact. As an example, think about two magnets. As you move the magnets closer and closer to each other, you will feel that they either attract or repel each other. This happens because of the magnetic field that is created by each magnet. We can generalize the idea of a field in physics like this. When two objects exert a force on each other without coming in contact, in other words, when the forces between the objects act at a distance, we say that a field is present which enables the objects to exert a force on each other. The idea of a field in physics is very powerful because different types of fields behave similarly. If you understand how one type of field works, you should be able to easily understand the properties of other types of fields. The three types of fields that you will learn about in IB physics are electric, magnetic and gravitational fields. To represent fields in physics, we use field lines. Here are some specific points about field lines for electric fields. Some of these also apply to other fields. The field lines begin and end on opposite charges. An arrow on each line shows the direction in which positive charge would move. When the field is stronger, the lines are closer to each other. The lines meet the conducting surface at a 90 degree angle and the lines never cross. Let's draw some common electric field patterns based on these points. We'll begin with a field due to a point charge. Let's assume that we have a negative point charge, so for example an electron. The electric field lines look like this. Since the field is stronger closer to the point charge, the lines here are closer to each other and spread out as we move away from the charge. You can also see that the lines do not cross. We still have to add arrows to our diagram. The arrow should show the direction in which positive charge would move. Imagine that we place a positive charge near this negative charge. Since a positive and a negative charge attract each other, the force exerted by the negative charge on the positive charge points towards the negative charge. This means that the positive charge would move towards the negative charge, which means that the arrows will point towards the negative charge like this. The electric field pattern for a positive point charge would look the same, except that the arrows would point away from this positive point charge. This kind of field pattern is called a radial field, which is exactly how an electric field pattern looks like around a conducting sphere. Let's see what happens when we have two point charges. We'll assume that one of the point charges is positive and the other one is negative. This is how the electric field lines look like. As you can see, all arrows point away from the positive and towards the negative charge. Next, let's see the electric field pattern between a point charge and a conducting plate. Here is a negative point charge and a positive conducting plate. The electric field lines here look like this. Finally, let's see the electric field pattern between two conducting plates. This is how the field lines look like for the two plates. Next, let's discuss electric field strength. Earlier we saw that when a charge is placed at a point, there is an electric field present around this point due to the charge. The strength of this electric field will be different at different points in the field. So for example, the electric field strength will be greater when we are closer to the charge and smaller when we are farther away from the charge. Also, logically, 
When the magnitude of the charge is larger, the strength of the field due to the charge will also be larger. As often happens in physics, we can use an equation to calculate the strength of this electric field at different points. Before looking at the equation, let's define electric field strength. So electric field strength at a point is the force per unit charge experienced by a small positive point or test charge placed at that point. Don't worry if this definition seems a bit confusing. We'll further explore it in a moment. But first, let's see the formula for electric field strength. Here are the variables that are present in this formula. Let's see what the definition and the formula exactly mean. Imagine that we have a point and that we place a charge at this point. Let's assume that the magnitude of this charge is uppercase Q. It can be a positive or a negative charge. Of course, there is an electric field present around this point due to the charge. Let's say that we want to calculate the strength of this electric field at this point. We'll assume that the distance between the charge and this point is R. According to our definition, electric field strength at this point is the force per unit charge experienced by a small positive point or test charge placed at that point. This means that in order to find the electric field strength, we'll have to place a small positive point charge, also called a test charge, at this point. A quick side note, that there is no scientific or natural reason why this point charge has to be positive. We could just as well use a negative point charge. The choice of a positive charge is arbitrary. So let's place this positive test charge at the point. We'll assume that the magnitude of this charge is lowercase q. We discussed in an earlier video that charges exert a force on each other. Let's assume that the force exerted by uppercase Q on lowercase Q is F. In other words, the force experienced by lowercase Q is F. Of course, the force exerted by lowercase Q on uppercase Q is also F. Going back to the definition, we can see that electric field strength is the force per unit charge experienced by this test charge. Therefore, to calculate the electric field strength, we have to divide the force experienced by lowercase q by the magnitude of lowercase q. This is how we get that E, the electric field strength, is equal to F, the force experienced by lowercase q, divided by lowercase q. Let's combine this equation with Coulomb's law. Here is the Coulomb's law formula. Substituting this expression in place of F in the electric field strength formula, we get that E is equal to K times the product of the two charges, so uppercase Q times lowercase Q, divided by R squared, so this is the entire expression for F, and then this is divided by lowercase Q, so I can just write lowercase Q in the denominator of this fraction lowercase q cancels, and we end up with k times uppercase q over r squared. This formula tells us that electric field strength is proportional or directly proportional to the magnitude of the charge, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the charge. Finally, since force is a vector, electric field strength is also a vector. The direction of the electric field depends on the sign of the charge, so in this example on the sign of uppercase Q. When the charge is positive, it repels the small positive test charge, so the direction of the electric field strength is pointing away from the charge. When the charge is negative, it attracts the positive test charge, which means that in this case the electric field is pointing towards the charge. Note that the direction of electric field strength is the same as the direction of the arrows on the electric field lines. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. We started by explaining what a field is, and said that when two objects exert a force on each other without coming in contact, 
In other words, when the forces between the objects act at a distance, a field is present and enables the objects to exert a force on each other. The three types of fields that you will learn about in IB physics are electric fields, magnetic fields, and gravitational fields. We added that in physics we use field lines to represent fields, and then listed the characteristics of electric field lines, which are the following. The lines begin and end on opposite charges, an arrow on each line shows the direction in which positive charge would move, when the field is stronger the lines are closer to each other, the lines meet the conducting surface at a 90 degree angle, and the lines never cross. Based on these points we drew some common electric field patterns. These patterns were for a point charge, two point charges, a point charge in a conducting plate, and two plates. Then we moved on to discuss electric field strength and began by stating that when a charge is placed at a point, an electric field is present around this point due to the charge. We added that the strength of this electric field can be calculated at different points, in other words, at different distances from the charge. Then we defined electric field strength at a point, which is the force per unit charge experienced by a small positive point or test charge placed at that point. The definition leads to this formula for electric field strength. Next, we went on to combine this formula with Coulomb's law and found that electric field strength can also be expressed as E is equal to K times Q over R squared. In other words, the electric field strength due to charge Q at a distance R from this charge is proportional to the magnitude of the charge and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. We finished up by saying that electric field strength is a vector, and when the charge is positive, the electric field is pointing away from the charge, and when the charge is negative, the electric field is pointing towards the charge. This completes our discussion of electric fields. In the next video, we'll learn about electric current.